Hello everyone, in this lesson we are going to compare the boiling point of propane and hexane. Now what's very important is that propane, remember that's prop, so that's three carbons, so that looks like this, and now remember that it's just the drawing program I'm using that makes it look zigzag. In class you can just do it as three straight carbons and then you would attach all of your hydrogens like that. The next one we're going to look at is hexane. And so there we have hexane, which has six carbons. Now, when you're comparing the boiling points, we're not going to try to break them apart from each other. Remember that if you have a bottle that contains propane, so here I'm just going to try to draw a bottle. Now, if you want to boil this, well, that's going to say propane. And so in that bottle, you're going to have a whole lot of these propane molecules floating around. And then in a different bottle of hexane, you would have a whole lot of hexanes floating around. You're not going to have like some type of mixture with propane and hexane mixed together. That's not what they're talking about here. So let's start off with propane. So to understand how propane is going to work, we need to draw at least two propane molecules. So there I've decided to go and draw four pro, uh, propane molecules. But you must understand that if we have a bottle containing propane, there's probably trillions and trillions and trillions of these molecules. Now, if you wanted to boil this thing, so let's say you've got this bottle that contains propane, and in the mo let's say at a specific temperature, it's a liquid. If you want to, so let's just quickly draw all the liquid parts. Now, if you want to boil that liquid, you need to somehow cause it to go into the gas phase, where the gases will then separate from each other. So when things are in the liquid phase, that force of attraction between their particles is quite high. And that is why they are so close together. And so they all become, they're all very close together. And so that's why it looks liquidy. Then when you raise the temperature high enough, you are able to break those bonds and cause them to move apart from each other, further apart. And so that's when you go into the gas phase. So let's say we had this liquid with propane and we raise the temperature, raise the temperature. Eventually we will start getting gas because we will have enough temperature, which is energy, to break each of these forces between the molecules. Now that's these forces over here, okay? Your intermolecular forces. We're not going to break the individual bonds. Those are intra, and those we looked at in grade 11 and 10, which was your ionic, metallic, covalent. That's not what we're going to break. So we need to try to get an understanding whether this is going to be easy to do or very difficult. So if we look at propane, we know that it is a non-polar molecule, meaning it's completely balanced. Because remember, if I had to draw propane out using the normal way, and you attach hydrogens everywhere. We showed earlier that everything just cancels out. And so it's non-polar. So here we have a non-polar and a, another non-polar. And so when you have a non-polar and a non-polar, then this intermolecular force is going to be called London. Now, London forces are very, very weak. They're not strong at all. And so would it be very easy or very difficult to separate these? Well, very, very easy. And so that means that you won't have to make the temperature very high. And so the, the intermolecular or the, the boiling point will be very low. Now, in fact, if you had to go Google propane's boiling point, you would get a value of negative 42 degrees, which means that propane is a gas at room temperature. Because room temperature, let's take it as 20 degrees, for example, that is already a lot hotter then minus 42 and so anything more warmer than minus 42 is going to mean that propane is in the gas phase so if you ever find propane it will be a gas but if it's below so if you can go even colder than minus 42 like minus 60 then you would cause it to go back to a liquid now we're going to look at hexane so hexane is also an alkane but it's got six carbons and so we know that it's non-polar, and so the forces in between are going to be London. But because it's a longer chain, there is more space for London forces to be present. And so that's going to cause these two molecules to stick together more strongly. And so it's going to be more difficult to separate them because you're going to have to overcome that force, that force, that one, and a whole lot more compared to propane, which only has three carbons. So due to the fact that there'll be more forces that you need to overcome to separate 
molecules of hexane, this means that the boiling point of hexane will be higher. And if you had to go Google hexane, you would see that its boiling point is 68 degrees Celsius. So that's quite a significant jump. It's about a, almost 100 degrees different. So propane, negative 42, hexane, 68. This means that at room temperature, which let's assume is about 20 degrees, we haven't yet reached 68. And so propane will, I mean, hexane will still be in the liquid phase. But if you had to heat it up to 68, it would start turning into the gas phase. So in this video, we looked at propane and hexane, and we saw that both of them have London forces for their intermolecular forces. However, hexane has a higher boiling point because it's a longer molecule. There are more, there is more area for the London forces to act upon, and so more energy is needed to overcome all of those forces, and so the boiling point is higher.